The name of this tutorial is Ira Krakow's Blender 2.62 Shape Keys tutorial. Shape keys are used to create fine-tuned changes to the mesh without adding geometry. This is great for doing animations and for performance in the game engine because extra geometry slows down the responsiveness of the character. Some examples of where shape keys can be useful are animating a rig, changing facial expressions on a character, and lip syncing with audio. The appearance of a mesh deformation can be simulated without using modifiers. You should not use shape keys unless the geometry is final because adding geometry will mess up the shape keys. Shape keys affect the mesh data block, not the object itself. The appearance of an object can change at the object level. For example, when an object is scaled or rotated, or even moved, if you are in perspective mode. This is not the same as a shape key change because the location, scaling, and rotation information are not stored in the mesh data. To animate these, use the lock, rot, and scale channels. Shape keys are animated using the shape keys editor in the dope sheet. We will apply shape keys to the cube to get you used to the workflow. As an exercise, once you get the hang of it, I'll suggest how to use shape keys to morph Suzanne. The first part is to define the shapes. To do this, stay in object mode. Click the object data icon for the cube, the icon with the triangle. Scroll down to the shape keys panel. Press the plus key to add a shape. The first shape is called basis because it's the basis for all the other shapes. Think of it as the object in its original position. You can add as many shapes as you want. Each shape is a deformation of the mesh from its basis. Press the plus key again to add a shape. Change the name of the key called key1 by default to pyramid. Tab into edit mode. Unselect all the vertices by pressing the A key. Then box select the top face and scale the face in until you have a pyramidal shape. Tab out of edit mode. This saves the changes you made in the mesh data. The cube is back in its original basis shape, so you can't readily see that the pyramid shape has been saved. However, if you click on the little pin icon, you can verify that the shape was stored. After you verify that the shape was stored, unclick the pin. The value slider, by default a number between 0 and 1, gives the percentage of influence of the shape on the basis shape, which is what the default behavior relative does. A value of 0 means no influence. A value of 1 is 100% influence, i.e. the shape is completely morphed into a pyramid. Move the slider from 0 to 1 and back to 0. Watch the cube shape change from a cube to a pyramid and back to the cube. This influence value is what needs to be animated if you want to animate the shape change. The minimum and maximum settings are interesting. They used to exaggerate the influence, either negatively or positively. To illustrate, change the minimum value to negative 1 and the maximum value to 2. Move the value slider from 0 to negative 1 to 2 and back to 1. Observe how the cube's shape changes. The effect is ideal for cartoonish effects to make a character's head really swell up or shrink, for example. Let's add a second shape key called stretch. Click the plus key. Change the shape name from key 2 to stretch. Tab into edit mode. Go to face select mode. Control tab and then select face. Select the lower right face. Grab it and move it to stretch the cube in the X direction, say two or three blender units. Tab out of edit mode and into object mode. The cube returns to its basis shape. Clicking on the pin icon confirms that Blender has stored the stretch shape key. Unclick the pin. Now it's time to animate the two shapes. We'll morph from the cube to the pyramid over 50 frames. Then we'll stretch the pyramid from frame 51 to frame 100. And then it'll go back to its original up frame 200. To do this, we'll go into the animation preset scene a setup Blender has that is designed for all types of animation, including shape keys. We'll start with the dope sheet, the window in the upper left. You can access the shape key editor by clicking on the dope sheet drop down and changing it to shape key editor. Note that there are entries for pyramid and stretched uh, shape keys, as well as a decimal number for the influence of each of those keys. It's time to keyframe these shape keys. To do this, right click on the pyramid slider and bring up the context menu. Select Insert Keyframe. Note that the slider changes color to yellow. Then right click on the stretch slider and select Insert Keyframe. 
the stretch slider's color also changes to yellow. Yellow means that this value is keyframed. It's a good practice to keyframe the beginning of the animation at frame 1 to the basis position unaffected by any shape key changes. Also change the animation length in the timeline to 200 from its default of 250 frames. In addition, there are yellow diamond shapes at frame 1, both for the pyramid and the stretch keys, as well as a diamond uh, that's yellow for the dope sheep. The, the diamond means that this particular frame is keyframed. The fact that it's re uh, yellow means the keyframe is selected. If the diamond was white, the keyframe would not be selected. These diamonds can be selected and moved, much like the vertices in a 3D window, although that's not our focus right now. Now go to frame 50, where we'll morph our cube into a pyramid by entering the number 50 in the timeline. In the pyramid slider, enter the number 1. Note the additional yellow diamond on frame 50 of the dope sheet. Also note that the 3D view shows that the cube has changed to a pyramid. The 3D view is also noting that the view is on frame 50. Now go to frame 100 by entering the location in, its, in the timeline. Enter the number 1 in the stretch slider. Note the diamond on frame 100 of the stretch key. In addition, the 3D view shows both the pyramid and the stretch keys having been 100% applied to the original cube shape. We're going to animate the cube going back to its original shape from frame 101 to frame 200. Go to frame 200 by entering it in the timeline. In the pyramid slider, enter 0. In the stretch slider, also enter 0. The 3D view shows the original cube shape and the diamonds have been added, indicating keyframes for pyramid and stretch keys at that frame. In the timeline window, press Alt-A to animate and watch the 3D view. The cube first becomes a pyramid, then the pyramid stretches, then the cube returns to its original shape. Press Escape to stop the animation. Look at the dope sheet, particularly the pyramid line. Note the solid orange line between frame 50 and frame 100. The reason the line is solid is because the pyramid's influence did not change from frame 50 to frame 100. Instead, the stretch shape key was added. In a complex animation with a lot of things being keyframed, it's useful to know what, what has not been changed. Look at the F-curve editor, which contains the graphs. There are lines for cube and key. Click on the left arrow next to key. Note that there's a graph of the pyramid and another one for stretch. Clicking and unclicking on the eye icon lets you view and optionally edit each of the graphs. By the way, moving, scaling, and rotating the cube have their own curves. Let's move the cube while it's morphing. To do this, go to frame 1. From the 3D view, press the I key and select location. Go to frame 200. Move the cube. From the 3D view, press the I key and select location. Now the cube is moving and changing shape at the same time. The location F curves display in the graph editor as well. That's the basics of shape key. As an exercise, experiment with Suzanne and see what you can come up with. I hope you enjoyed this shape key adventure. Happy blendering.